Hello, me again. And, um, you know, I think I made a little mistake. I accidentally left my Pyraminx, which we had talked about before. I left it alone, and I didn't realize this, but I actually left it in the same space as my Rubik's Cube. And uh, I think they might have gotten a little bit too familiar with each other, because by the end of the night, after they had gotten together, I saw that they had spawned something in between that. And from that unholy union came this guy. Well, this guy too, I guess. Two twins actually was, was born. Um, Master Morphix, or something like that. I have heard Power Morphix, but Master Morphix, I think, is what this is. Now, it's interesting, this is a union between the Pyraminx and the Rubik's Cube. So, if the Pyraminx and the Rubik's Cube were to get together, um, they would get something like this. Obviously, the, pyr the pyramidal shape is an autosomal dominant thing because uh, it looks has the shape of a pyramid. But when you look at its behavior and its genetics, it actually behaves exactly like a Rubik's Cube, exactly like a 3x3, three three, thus forming this guy. This is pretty much exactly the same thing, but kind of in a pillowed, or perhaps you can call it a rouleau form, who knows. So when tackling something like this, one thing that stands out as a similarity is of course the shape. But one thing that stands out as a difference is that of course, the Pyraminx is a shape, is, um, is a face turner. Face turner very similar to, of course, the Rubik's Cube. This guy appears to be a corner turner. You don't turn from the face, you turn from the corner. Until you realize that it's not a corner at all that's turning, it is the face. It's a face that looks exactly like the Rubik's Cube. So something to bear in mind, something to look at this, uh, something to understand with this, is when solving it is to understand what your faces are, what's your centers, what's your edges, and, and what's your corners. The way to look at it is actually, if this were the face, this is actually the center over here. Now because the center has two colors, it looks like it might behave like a super cube. And it sorta of, kinda does, but not, uh, not exactly, and I'll show you why. In terms of the edges, these guys would be the edges. Now the edges we can define as something that articulates with two centers. So this, both of these articulate with this center and also this center. They join those two. But if the center here is made of two colors, whereas the Rubik's Cube is just one, then the edges here are one color, whereas usually they're two. So we've kind of made up for that and maybe taken the whole Super Cube motif out of it that way. What's also interesting is that we have, of course, four corners, and a corner will be defined as a side that joins three um, faces together. So generally they'll have three colors, in this case, white, red, and blue. So here's an example of a corner, which just like the cube has three um, colors also, blue, red, and green. But in addition to that, this is a corner, this is a corner, these little guys here are also corners, and they have slightly different characteristics in that, just like any corner, they basically join three sides together. Here's one side, which joins from there, another side, and another side. But if I can get it to move, and, ah, and another side. But what's interesting about this is these corners only have one color. They appear to be monochromatic. So this offspring of the Rubik's Cube and the Pyraminx, which outwardly, phenotypically looks like a pyramid, but genotypically behaves like a cube, is solved exactly like a Rubik's Cube, except you have to bear in mind the slight differences here um, in terms of the color scheme. What I do want to point out, though, is that even though these corners have one color, these corners over here obviously have to be rotated in exactly the right way, and it looks like it doesn't matter how these are rotated. But what I will tell you is that it actually does matter. There is an act there is actually a specific orientation that's important with this. You just can't see it. It's hidden. But that concept is going to be port important at the end after we've solved it. So in terms of scrambling, you know, you can do it here. You can do your 180 degree turns. But in addition to that, you can do 90 degree turns. Move it here. And as long as we substitute this corner for this, 
Moving in here, we can start doing our 90 degree turns, getting various and sundry shapes out of it. So here it is in a scrambled state. Let's move the field of action here. Looks pretty impressive. So what's a good way of navigating around? And just for the sake of comparison, this guy is scrambled in exactly the same way. So they're both pretty scrambled. And the solver is pretty much the same. So how do I start with something like this? How do I begin to navigate through here? Well, like with any puzzle, especially one that bears resemblance to a supercube, I want to make sure that I have my centers all lined up together. So how am I going to do that? Well, here's blue. Here's a blue over here. And I'm just going to turn the center so that they're in line. Blue, blue, blue. This doesn't really contribute much to the solution, but it does help orient things. Green, green, green. Yellow, yellow, yellow. So first step, red, red, red. All of my centers are coordinated together, which will help my perspective. I'm going to pattern this exactly after how I saw the Rubik's Cube. So the first step is let's just pick a center. I'm going to pick this one because this edge is already in. Whoops. And I'm going to start putting the rest of the edges in here. So I'm going to have to put a green edge here, red edge here, and a red edge here. And I'm just going to start moving that, you know, maintaining my perspective. So let's see if we can find perhaps another green edge. It doesn't really matter which one. The good news is, is although the, I have two colors of the center, I only have one color edge, so that makes it more simple. Where's another green edge? Here's another green edge here. So I know it's hard to visualize this as a cube, so you may have to just do a lot of rotating around and sometimes sides turn on you unexpectedly. So it might take a little while to get that perspective. But here's a green, and I'm going to move this in. So I actually moved this green to here. As soon as I do that, what I want to do is make sure that I've got the center lined up because I'm trying to make the cross. So this is the center that I'm from the face that I'm putting in. This is actually going to be my face. But I need to make sure that it articulates with a center that's just below that. And here's a green over here. To make that happen, I'm going to move this down, away, and then I'm going to move this out so that I can turn it to meet um, this green center here. So I'm going to turn it out, like so, and then I'm going to turn this center so that I can move it into position. So green meets green. I know it's hard to see because this tongue is sticking out at you. So let's move this back here. But as you can see, I've got two of my greens in here. Let me just move this out so you can see it better. Ha! All right, so two greens here. Now I'm going to line the red edges up with this. Again, an edge is something that articulates between two centers. So let's see if we can find a red. Well, here's a red right here, so I can put that in. Now that I know that I can put that in, I want to redistribute it or reorient it so that it orients with this red over here. So let's move it down once again out of the field of action. Move this across here, then I'm going to turn this center until I can move this into the red. Bang, right there. And then move it back. So we're doing pretty good here. Red, green, green. Now the next red. Is there another one here? I'm just going to turn this around until I can find, but nope, no other red. So I have to borrow one maybe from here. So it's not too difficult. Literally, I'm just doing it the way I would do Rubik's Cube. This is oriented wrong. So I'm just going to turn it around like so, around here, here, here. So this is done kind of intuitively. So I got two reds here, but I want this red to correlate with the red center here. Let me move this out so you can see what I'm doing. See, sides are moving on me, things are shifting. It's a little hard to keep things straight sometimes. Okay, so I need to move it into here. So let's move it once again out of the field of action. Turn it. Now I'm going to turn the center until I can line my red up with it. Like so, and move it in. Okay, so basically both of my, all four of my edges are in. And this is going to be my side over here. So, so far so good. Now that I've done that, the next step would be to put in my corners. Understanding that two of the corners are easy, these little guys, and the other is just like the Rubik's Cube. So 
From over here, I'm going to look for the green, red, and it would be yellow, yellow corner. So green, red, yellow, green, red, yellow. I'm going to move it down from here. Now, it is possible that there's no such thing as a green, red, and yellow. But that's not the case here. That's just in case I didn't orient these correctly. So I have to blast this out and then move it here, move it just below that. And again, it's pretty simple stuff. You just have to try to imagine it like it was a cube. Although it's hard to do that when you have three edges here. And then I'm just gonna roll this in here. Turn, 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 turn. Now, much of, a lot of you may have more efficient ways of solving Rubik's Cubes. This is just how I do it. Which I learned later on in life than I had wanted to. Didn't learn it until I was older. Like about six months ago, believe it or not. So anyway, this edge is in. If I wanted to put the red edge down here, I'm gonna find the little red one down here, it's not here, so can't do it yet. It's actually over here, so let me substitute the green one. If there's a green, yeah, right here, green. So I'm just gonna roll this in the way I would roll on any edge. Move this side down, in, and it's only one color, so I don't have to do a lot of wheeling around, put it in, there it is. I'm immediately gonna put this red in over here, substitute it with this. Turn, turn, and up. So there that is. Last step for the side, red, green, and blue. Red, green, and blue. Which is right over here. So, move down, across, and we're just gonna keep doing this until we roll it in. Boom. All right, so what we have here is we actually have our first side complete with our cross, which articulates with the centers here, same thing here, and all the edges in place. So, as with the Rubik's Cube, we do the same thing, turn it upside down, and get the second layer. So the second layer here is just moving in edges. I'm gonna be moving edges in. I need to have the red one. Is there a red one up here that I can use? Yeah, this one. Have to be careful to move it in the right way. I don't want the longer edge coming down. You can see it sticks out. It's the wrong shape. So I'm gonna put this one in with a smaller edge here. So that's the same algorithm as the Rubik's Cube to put the edges in. Turn. The biggest trouble that I have with this is learning how to hold it. I'm so used to holding cubes that I'm liable to cause edges to shift and to turn without meaning to. Kind of like I'm doing right now. And then I end up turning the wrong edge. Okay, now let me get my bearings and try that again. Okay, this will come in here. So turn turn Turn, 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 turn. Now I'm getting the hang of it. So there it is there. This moves in here, but not in this direction. As you can see, the small end, the small end doesn't fit, but the big end does. So turn, 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 turn. And it is a learning curve. As you do it, you'll get faster at it. There that is, and same thing here now, green. Every so often I may lose perspective, so I have to remind myself, this is one layer here, the bottom layer. This over here is the second layer, this over here is the top. So I wanna put a green one in, do I have a green one to use? I don't, I have to bump this out. But before I do that, let's put this yellow in. This will come down here, right? So turn, turn. Turn, turn, boom, boom. And what's fun about this is there's nothing new. It's just a matter of 
expanding your brain a little bit. Now to get this one in, oh, look at this mess up top here. But anyway, to get this one in, we have to bump this out. So here's the top layer here. Turn, turn. Turn, 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 and it bumped it up. If ever you become confused in terms of how things are supposed to turn, um, or when it's time to turn it, or if you've turned it enough, just move these corners to where this is. So I know if I move this here, then I can turn it again. You'd be surprised how easy it is to get screwed up with that. Anyway, this edge comes down here in this position. So we have turn, 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 turn. I was just about to say I'm getting the hang of it. I spoke too soon. Anyway, so first layer is in and second layer is in. 